and you know as a wills and estates lawyer dealing with so many different emotions um and it's quite a, a personal time for a lot of people could you share a little bit about one how you manage people's emotions so that it doesn't impact you personally and then secondly how you manage the the client's expectations to make sure that they feel more at ease with the process I think you can only ever manage people's emotions up to a certain stage. There's a point where I would say they might need specialised intervention and that's where healthcare professionals and healthcare workers need to come in. So you do as much as you can, but there is a point that there are some people who need more help than what we as lawyers can give them. I think clients, they like to be heard that they want you to to hear their story and if that's sort of half the battle if they want to, they want you to understand how they've gotten to this point in their life they want you to sort of just know where they're coming from so i'd say you have to be a good listener you've got to be a good listener i think there's no substitute for face to face meetings uh, at the, the, in the last year, obviously, we haven't had that luxury. And I think you can notice a change in the, the dynamics of relationships. There, I've always been a firm believer, like there is no substitute for face-to-face. It doesn't have to be all meetings, but certainly key points in the relationship early on when big decisions need to be made. I find that just that face-to-face rapport creates a different connection and relationship. We've also looked certainly just at Morris Blackburn. We've done a lot of training in vicarious trauma uh, training and they've developed like an award-winning training program for all staff. So it's not just lawyers, not just legal assistants. It's, it's like a compulsory training module at the firm where they try to equip us with just better skills, coping skills, how to look after ourselves and the clients at the same time and not let the client's stresses and emotions sort of just overwhelm us because we're exposed to it all day, every day. And if we allowed every client's emotions to sort of, you know, consume us, um, it would be pretty overwhelming. What do you do to, you know, help you not, let your client's emotions overwhelm you what do you do there one well one of the things one of a little something that i've done for some time and I don't, the firm may not like this is that i don't actually have work emails uh on my on my phone and for years i've done that now and i just something so simple as there's nothing worse than say, you know, you're coming home from work, you get that last email on the train that is something that you didn't want to have to deal with before you're about to come home to dinner to your family. And you you wouldn't be present at home. You'd you'd have these work would just always be, you know, mulling over. And again, weekends are there for you to like for you and your family Checking work emails on weekends, I, I just don't believe much good can come from that. So it's just that boundaries and it, clients understand that, but it's just a case of you've just got to manage their expectations and they need to respect your boundaries. So, so like that's just like probably one example of, but it's, I would consider that almost like a game changer to separate work and home. Yeah, I think that's really good. And I think over the last week we've been speaking about boundaries. I've been speaking about boundaries with uh, people in the team and even others. Um, and one thing to keeping, I suppose, mentally healthy is setting those boundaries because we're so we're connected more than ever before with social. So it's good that you've mm-hmm. been doing that for years. At what point did you realize you had to set that boundary and say, "Look, I'm not checking. I'm not going to have my emails on my phone." I reckon probably kids was probably a real sort of turning point for me, um, both like on the work front, in life. And you just, when you sort of, well, well real open is when, a, when, when you, ch- like when a three-year-old says like, dad, get off your phone. 
like, yeah, I don't think that, like that's pretty like confronting, really, when your own kid's saying that. So th- that's a real eye opener, and you realise you don't have to be checking work emails twenty four seven. And so I think kids, kids can, was probably the for me the big biggest change. 